Please join me for our opening prayer. Glorious Trinity, make your presence known in this place through our worship, our prayer, and the reading of your word. Through our hymns and songs, our prayer and meditation, we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Enfold us in your love and empower our worship that your name might be glorified in this place and in our lives. Good morning, my name is Pamela Browning. I'm the Director of Children's Ministries here at Nicholasville United Methodist Church. We are glad you are joining us for our worship service this morning. There are some announcements I'd like to highlight as we get started. Um, church, we still need your support. Ministries and missions continue even during the pandemic. Under the current circumstances, you can give online or you can give through snail mail. If you'd like to give online, go to www.numcky.org and at the top right of the webpage, click the, on, the Give Online link. That will take you to a secure webpage where there are different options as to how you can give. We will be doing the drive through offering today from 12 to 1. Our call, our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 95, 1 to 7. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his, which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand.
Sometimes tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I Oh, 
my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other people said. Amen. Friends, it was good to be together uh, in our time of worship. Um, I'm Pastor Wade, and we are glad you're with us online today for our time of worship. We're going to be going into our prayer time here in just a moment. Uh, this is a time in the service where we uh, take some uh, time set aside to share some praises, some prayer requests, and to go before uh, God as His people gather together uh, in different locations uh, to share some prayer time. A couple things to share with you. Uh, some of these are uh, praises, some of these are prayer concerns just to share uh, before our prayer time uh, to, to lift up here. Uh, next Sunday, uh, one of our retired pastors, Gary Mata, is going to be bringing the message. Very excited about that. Thank you, Pastor Gary, for bringing the message. Uh, my family and I, we're going to be gone this next week for some staycation, a little getaway for a few days. So very thankful for our tech and worship teams and for Pastor Gary bringing the message next week. As we've mentioned in some of our email uh, correspondences, uh, we are expecting some additional guidance from our bishop's task force on reopening as to when we might be uh, gathering again for partial in-person services as well as online. So uh, once that guidance uh, comes, we'll be getting that word out to leaders within our congregation, certainly leaders in our tech and worship teams as well. Um, there's going to be a back to school event uh, kind of a backpack giveaway happening at East Jessamine High School in a couple of weeks, I believe on Saturday, August the 15th. Is that right? August 15th. Our church, as well as other churches, have provided um, some financial support for this event, and we're also looking for some volunteers. Um, basically, it's going to be uh, guiding cars in, an, and kind of a, it's a backpack giveaway done through cars, kind of an interesting way to do this, but volunteers to um, uh, check families in and to kind of guide traffic at East High School. So if you are interested or want to know more, contact the church office. We can get you some more information uh, along those lines. Um, last week I shared also that there was a, a gathering. There's become an ongoing gathering, really, in Jessamine County of uh, pastors from some of our black and white churches gathering together to seek um, community, to seek understanding. And uh, a couple of us from our church went last week, and it's been a great time just to kind of get to know some of our brothers and sisters from other churches and begin to form some friendships and some dialogue about justice and race issues here in our own community. So a uh, praise that that is happening and prayer concern that that would keep on happening and good bridges would continue to be built right here in our own community. I want to share some sad news. I just found this out not very long ago. Um, we want to pray for... Um, Bonnie Bannock's family upon the death of her husband, Jim. Uh, Jim uh, was hospitalized about a week ago, uh, apparently was struggling. They sent him home under hospice care and supervision, uh, and he died while under hospice care. So prayers for uh, the Bannock family, especially prayers for Bonnie right now during this difficult time. Again, this is news we just found out very recently. So uh, prayers for that family. Uh, and also a praise to share. Um, We've been praying for, uh, for Margaret Ritter for some time uh, for, uh, for cancer treatments. And earlier this week, she went uh, to get a, a PET scan 
and uh, the scan revealed that she was cancer free. So we are very excited and celebrating with Margaret and for her family uh, during this time as well. Friends, what we're going to do is have just a brief uh, moment of silence. Um, Brian's going to play some music in the background. Thank you, Brian. I'm going to lead us in um, a time of prayer together, and then we'll end that time by saying the Lord's Prayer together. So I invite you in these moments, uh, find some space and time where you can just kind of quiet yourself, uh, breathe deeply, and uh, let's bow our heads and open our hearts and go before the throne of grace. My friends, would you join me today as we pray in the name of Jesus? Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we love you and we praise you and our hearts are open to give all thanksgiving back to you this day. You are highly exalted above all others. You are the creator and the sustainer of all things. You are the source of all life. And Lord, we give you praise and thanks this day. You made the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains, and Lord, you made us, even us, in the likeness and the image of you. Today, Lord, we come before you and we pray that you would pour out on us your spirit, a spirit of love and compassion that we could share with other people. We pray, Lord, that you would enable us to serve and love others in your name, Lord, that you would empower us to reach out to others who might be in need and love and serve those who are different from us. And Lord, to humbly and graciously receive any gifts, any graces that come our way through your hand and through the person of somebody else. Lord, today we pray that we would worship you with our whole heart love you with our whole being and Lord desire to serve you and serve others that your kingdom might be glorified and your name might be lifted on high today father we ask for your peace for those who are grieving and your power for those who are weak your presence for those who are alone and your healing touch for those who are sick all these things we ask and all these things we offer back in the mighty and powerful and awesome name of Jesus Christ. And we take time now to remember the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when they prayed together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 18, 15 to 22. Let's hear God's word. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I truly tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? as many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pam. That's kind of a challenging scripture, isn't it? Uh, the, the theme, if you will, of, of the message today is on this idea of, of boundaries and, and the idea of separation, separating us from others. And that sounds like such a bummer, doesn't it? It sounds like such a hard topic. I, I know it does. So let's do this. Let's try to approach this in a way where we can see uh, the positives in this. There are some blessings that come out of this and maybe have some fun telling some stories along the way. Um, would you pray with me as we go before God one more time? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your word how it calls to us, how it challenges us, Lord, how it guides us and instructs us. Lord, speak to our hearts today in a fresh way. And Father, may we examine ourselves, examine our lives, and Lord, be more clear about who we are and who you've called and created us to be. We love you. We give you this time and we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we ask and pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Now, uh, story, my... My kids are uh, 12 and 13 years old, respectively, so we are still a few years away from teaching them how to drive. You know, driver's test and driving license and dad and mom trying to teach the kids how to drive. And I'm confident, I am so confident that they one day will be great drivers. I mean, any of you parents out there? in that phase right now teaching your kids to drive or just have taught your kids to drive or grandparents remember those days do you still have the nightmares i mean do you still have the flashbacks and the cold sweats you know i mean just just asking just thinking out loud you can start praying for me now it's a couple years away but just start praying for me now so i, I don't have any current stories to tell about uh, teaching to drive but i do have a story about the last time i taught someone to drive and this is going back a long time. I, I was probably in college. I was working on uh, summer camp staff at Aldersgate Camp. And one summer, and I, I can't even tell you exactly when it was, probably 30 years ago, one summer, uh, three of us on camp staff stayed behind on a weekend after all the kids had gone home, all the, all the camp staff had gone home, because one of our camp staff needed to learn to drive. And I thought, well, of course I can do this. So let me give you the background here. So, if you've never been to Aldersgate Camp, imagine a uh, camp in the mountains of kind of uh, central eastern Kentucky. And uh, in the front of the camp, there's, there's a big field. And I'm guessing it's maybe five acres. It's roughly rectangular. And uh, we decided to give a driving lesson in, in this field. I got my Jeep, my Jeep Wrangler, stick shift, and uh, this camp staff named Vicki and myself and Lee Padgett, the director of the camp, we were going to teach Vicki how to drive. Now, the field is important, okay? So imagine a roughly rectangular field, ah, five acres or so, and a big ditch line running down the middle. The ditch line's important. On one boundary, there was the highway coming into camp. So there was a kind of a drainage ditch and then the highway. And then another boundary was the road going into the camp and just a normal paved road with a fence and a barn on the other side. That becomes important. Another boundary is a creek. You kind of drop off this little ledge and go into a creek. That boundary becomes important. And the fourth boundary on the other end is a tree line, kind of some woods. So a couple roads, a creek, 
and a tree line, five acres, a Jeep, me and Vicki, and Lee. Now, Vicki, Victoria, was a seminary student here at Asbury Seminary in Wilmore. She was in her late 20s, early 30s, and she was from Jamaica, and she had never driven a car in her life. Never driven a car in her life. And her goal was, after the summer internship at Aldersgate Camp, she was going to come back here to Jessamine County, two blocks that way, and go to the courthouse for her, her driving lesson. Folks here in Nicholasville, you can kind of spatially understand what I'm talking about here. She was going to come right here for her driving lesson. So this particular Saturday, this is what we did. Vicki got in the driver's seat. I was in the passenger seat. Lee was in the jump seat in the back of the Jeep. Somehow we got it started. I kind of shifted it into gear for Vicki, and we went rumbling across the camp. Now, Vicki has this amazing Jamaican accent because she was from Jamaica. And for the next five or ten minutes, it was, well, I can't even do the accent, but she would kind of squeal and yell at the joy of driving. We were only doing about eight miles an hour because it was in first gear. But you get the idea. And then the squeals would turn to screams, as she almost hit every obstacle in the way. And so what would happen is Vicky would scream in Jamaican, Lee would scream in his Kentucky and Arkansas accents, and I would lean over and grab the wheel and just gently turn it. Hey, Vicky, there's the creek. Let's not go there. Hey, Vicky, there's the barn. Let's turn around. Hey, there's a ditch. You hit the ditch, you know? I mean, so for five or ten minutes, we just did this again and again and again. Lee was white-knuckling it in the back. Vicky, I think, hit almost every obstacle or tried to in first gear eight miles an hour. It, it, it really is possible, friends. When that was over, I prayed that she would somehow pass her driver's test. and I would never have to ride with her again in my life. Somehow she did pass the test, praise God, but it was in no part, I don't think, to me or Lee trying to teach her how to drive. After that one experience, I had great appreciation for boundaries. Boundaries like guardrails. <laughs> The white and yellow lines on the side of the road, the rumble strips, signs, stoplights. Oh my goodness, bless our hearts. We survived riding with Vicky in the Jeep in the field that day. Today we're talking about this idea of boundaries and, and all those things we just mentioned, a guardrail or a light or a line on the road, those either refer to a boundary um, or they are a boundary. And it turns out in driving, boundaries are important, right? They keep you safe and also in life and in faith, boundaries are important. Now, we struggle with boundaries. I struggle with them, probably you struggle with them too, and that's okay, we struggle with boundaries. And uh, if COVID-19 has taught us anything, it's that we as Americans really have struggled with some of the health and safety boundaries that have been kind of uh, brought before us in the last weeks and months. Let me do a little experiment here. If you're listening to this or watching this, let me, Say some phrases, and these refer to boundaries, and see what kind of emotional reaction you have. Maybe you've thought about these things before. So, for example, if I said, health department guidance, how does that make you feel? Have you heard that once or twice or a thousand times in the last four months? If I said, CDC guidelines, how does that make you feel, right? These are all boundary issues, by the way. If I said, mandates or executive orders, or restrictions, or mandatory shutdowns. How, how does that make us feel? What does that make us think, right? I mean, see, these are all boundaries in one way or another. Uh, to mask or not to mask, that is the question, right? Um, to go to work, to go shopping, to go to a hot spot, to go socialize. I mean, things that we just never would have thought about doing otherwise now, that there are boundary questions and boundary issues. We're living it in a very real way right now in 21st century North America. When it comes to boundaries during pandemic, um, a lot of people are doing a lot of different things, right? And we're not calling out, not making fun, but some people are, are enshrining the boundaries. Other people are ignoring them. Others are kind of honoring them and trying to find ways to get around them, right? There's all kinds of ways that we respond to some of these boundaries during pandemic. But more seriously, go one step further with me. Um, this pandemic has changed many of our boundaries, life and work and church and our relationships. And many of us are experiencing um, kind of a, a free float where we're looking, we're looking for some boundaries right now. Um, for example, if, if someone had told you a year ago that when you go shopping in the spring and summer of 2020, if you even get to go inside a store, you might have to wait 
because there might only be 20% capacity and you still can't get in. Or there's arrows as to which aisles you can go down and there's plexiglass between you and the cashier. There's, there's stickers on the floor to tell you where to stand. I mean, are we in kindergarten, right? But this is what we're, this is what we're doing, right? When it comes to our work life, many of us went from working um, in a place, in a location, in an office to, to going home to work, or maybe we lost our jobs, and now we're trying to reintegrate, reorientate reor- back into work, and it's different. If someone had told you a year ago you couldn't shake a coworker's hand for the last half of 2020, you couldn't give a hug, you couldn't pat a coworker on the back, I mean, you think we're crazy, right? But, but all these things have changed, and in many ways, these are what? These are these are boundary issues. Go, go figure. Now, there's pros, there's cons, there's advantages, there's disadvantages, and there's consequences, both good and bad, to understanding and how we, how we follow out on these boundary things. So it's really kind of a boring topic, but we are all living it in a real way, whether we like it or not, right now in, uh, in 2020. Now, on a personal level, we have boundary issues as well. Who, who has ever had an interaction with somebody where they did something, they kind of wronged you, they hurt your feelings, they kind of stepped on your toes or crossed over into your lane? I mean, we, we've all been there. And sometimes these things are, you know, honest mistakes, and sometimes they're maybe intentional, right? It creates friction. It creates, it creates some tension, right? Sometimes we think, well, maybe it'll just go away by itself, you know, and occasionally it does, but more often than not, it doesn't. We have to have a conversation with somebody and talk to them about what happened, what, what you did, what you said, how, how it affected me, and vice, and vice versa. The, the advice that we got in the scripture today from Matthew chapter 18 is really a kind of a boundary issue, and Jesus is talking to the disciples and the early Christians about how they're supposed to live together in community, but really it has application and implication really for anybody really beyond even the local church and so what does he say well if someone does something that hurts you then you need to go to that person this is simple advice right go to that person today we would mask up glove up right call ahead text tell them you're coming but you go to that person you talk about it and man that thing that happened that really bothered me that hurt me that was wrong and and maybe there can be some reconciliation oh i forgive you oh i'm sorry and and it's all it's all good the scripture says, you know, if that, if that doesn't work, you don't give up. You try again, right? You, you take two or three people back with you and say, hey, let's, let's all sit down and talk about this, right? And, and the idea of taking two or three is, is not to gang up on the person, right, but to, to show some solidarity. And if, if the person's being uh, divisive, it's hard to divide two or three people. It's easy to kind of divide one against one. But you get the idea if you have people who are listening and trying to find right in all this, it's harder to be divisive and manipulative. And the end result is if that doesn't work and you you tell the wider body, then you've got to disassociate with that person. Now, that doesn't mean you still can't forgive them. That doesn't mean you you don't love them. Peter came to Jesus and said, look, if someone sins against me, how many times do I forgive them? Seven? And Jesus said, no, 77. Or some versions say 70 times seven. But the point is, a lot. You still forgive them. You still love them. But the boundary is consequence is you might not be associating with them for a while, right? There's got to be a, a consequence, a result uh, for that boundary being, being crossed. Now, I'll be honest, when we talk about things like that, it's kind of heavy. It can sound kind of boring or kind of irrelevant, but you know what? The Bible has so many great teachings, and sometimes we call them laws or commandments or instructions, but really they're talking about boundaries, things that God has given us to help us live in peace with God <laughs> and live in peace with each other. They really are blessings. And in a world like ours today, where people are kind of making up what they want to do and living how they want to, reclaiming and rediscovering some of these biblical teachings on what a boundary is makes tons of sense and actually blesses us in many ways. Let me give you just a couple of examples to show you what I'm talking about. Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, chapter 6, verses 4 and 5 is answering a question. Let let me read you the answer, then tell you what the question, what the boundary is. Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 5 says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. That's awesome. If the question is, how do we orient our life? Like, where is true north for us? 
What, what are the boundaries within which we're going to live? Who are we going to serve? This passage answers that. Love the Lord, your God, the only God. Love Him with all your heart, all your soul, uh, all your might, all, all your strength, right? That, that's an encouragement. That's an instruction. That's also a boundary issue. If you're doing that, then by definition, you're not doing some other things as well, right? That, that can be a good thing. Hold that thought. We'll come back to it. In, in the New Testament, Jesus would interact oftentimes with teachers of the law, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, and talking about uh, instructions and matters of interpretation. Bible scholars today tell us that there were 613 commandments or laws in the Old Testament. That's a bunch, by the way. Most of those are negative prohibitions. Thou shalt not. And don't do this. Don't do that, right? And there's a passage in Matthew's Gospel, uh, Matthew 22, where Jesus is talking to some teachers of the law. and They're kind of testing him, and, and they said, hey, well, what's, the, what's the most important commandment? And Jesus says, well, what's the law? You tell me. And that same thing I just read from Deuteronomy, a, a, a teacher of the law repeated that back. Let me read this. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said to him, You love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands depend all the law and all the prophets. You see what Jesus did is he took all 613 of those negative commands and turned them into two positive commands. Love God and love people. It's easier to do the two positives than to not do the 613, right? These are boundaries, right? Spend all your time loving God. Spend all your time loving people. And you won't need to worry about not doing all those, all those other things. This really is a boundary issue. You think about our country right now. Uh, the issues we're having about racism and injustice. Racial reconciliation. I hear these words from a long time ago from the prophet Micah. Chapter 6, verse 8. Listen to this. Talk about timely. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. I mean, what if that became our boundary, right? As people of faith. How much good, how much peace, how much reconciliation could happen if, if those became the simple boundaries within which we, we chose to live and exist and express our faith. There was a guy named John Wesley, maybe you've heard of him, and he was always writing down things and preaching sermons and giving lessons, and he would try to distill all these teachings into <laughs> memorable phrases that he would share with his circuit riders and other people. And one of the short phrases Wesley came up with to kind of summarize parts of the Christian faith was this. He said, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. I mean, if you stay within those boundaries, that's going to help you a lot along your way, right? Do no harm, check, that's a good boundary. Do good, check, that's a good boundary. And stay in love with God. Wow, that, that covers a lot of bases. Wesley went on to say something also that I, I love this. It's a, it's a hard phrase to memorize for me, but he says, do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can and all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as you can. This, this urging for us to be living out our lives in a good and gracious and loving way in all the means and all the places to all the people we possibly can. What if we thought about those phrases not as cute little quotes, but as boundaries through which to live our lives. Well, when you think of it that way, boundaries aren't such a bad thing, right? The, the truth is, when you set up some boundaries in your life, whether it be spiritually, socially, economically, you know, whatever, whatever part of your life, right, they actually can give us great freedom. Because when you say no to some certain things, that leaves you lots more room in your life to say yes to other things, right? You say no, maybe do some good things. No, I can't do this anymore. So you can say yes to some even better things. No, I need, I need to do this. If we say in our lives, I'm going to say less of this so I can have more of that, that's a boundary issue, right? And those things lead to life and good and, and blessing, right? So, so often we think about them as being 
negative and heavy and boring and irrelevant, but really they are life-giving, and they free us up in so many ways to live the life God has in store for us. You, you get the idea. I want to close with a story. I've told this story before. Maybe you've heard it. It's a story that a pastor and teacher Pete Briscoe tells, and I love this story. I'm glad it happened to him, not me, because it probably would have scared me to death. But uh, Pete Briscoe tells a story about how many years ago when he was a kid, they lived over in Great Britain. His dad was a pastor and also a, a writer. And one day, Pete, as a little boy, was playing outside in his front yard. A neighbor kid came over to play. They were playing together, doing what kids do. And on the side of the yard, there was a tall fence, a wooden fence, not, not the kind like we have here in Kentucky with the slats you can see through, but it was a fence <clears throat> kind of boarded up. You couldn't see what was on the other side. And Pete said that as long as they lived there, his parents had said, whatever you do, you, know, you can play in the front yard, play in the backyard, but don't climb the fence. So this one particular day, what did Pete and his buddy do? They were feeling kind of, kind of frisky, feeling kind of excited. Maybe they were bored. So they decided to climb over the fence and go on to the other side, just, just because. So Pete went over first, his buddy went over first, and they thought, look at us. We've done this thing. Hope Dad doesn't know, but we're free, right? And as soon as they kind of got over the fence, they looked around, and they were in a pasture, a beautiful pasture there in, uh, in Great Britain. As they turned around and looked over the other shoulder, they heard this snorting sound and this heavy hoof hitting the ground. And they saw a bull, the biggest bull they'd ever seen in their life. And he was kind of shaking his head and snorting. And the boys got really scared. And Pete says in that moment, they turned into Olympic athletes because they ran super fast and they jumped super high and they got over that fence away from that bull. And they thought, whew, we dodged it. And as soon as they turned around, Pete's dad, Stuart, was there. And he said in his great British Isles uh, brogue, he said, boys, sit down. <laughs> and they thought, oh boy, we've had it now, we've had it now. And Stuart Briscoe told Pete and his brother, I've told you never to climb over that fence. And this is what he said, not to spoil your fun, but to protect your lives. You see, I knew what was on the other side of the fence, but you all didn't. And the reason I said that was to protect your lives, not to take away your fun. And as the story goes on, he talks about, you know, God is like that too. God wants good for us. God has good things in store for us. God wants to bless us, and God wants to give us some good things, right? But at times, God puts up a boundary and says, don't, don't go beyond that. And we may not understand the reason at the time, but God does. We might say, but God, that's what I want over there. And God says, no, 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 no. I've got something far better for you over here. When God puts up a boundary, it's not to hurt us, but it's to protect us and bless us and prosper us. So friends, trust God, trust his hand, and trust his heart, and trust his timing, and, yeah, even trust his boundaries. They're there not to hurt us, but they're there to bless us. This is the God that we serve. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Pray with me. Almighty God, we thank you for your word, how it guides us, how it instructs us, how it calls us ever more close to you. Lord, on this day, speak to our hearts and show us, Lord, where we might need to say no to some really good things so we can say yes to some even better things. Lord, if we are feeling impatient or frustrated, uh, because of some obstacle, some boundary that you've put up in our life that we weren't expecting or, or didn't want, Lord, may this grow in us some patience and some trust, and Lord, just a desire to be able to, to wait on you and see what you have in store. See, when the timing is right, what door you're going to open in front of us. Lord, may we trust your heart. May we trust your hand. May we love you even more, and may we follow you fully in faith. It is in the mighty and awesome and powerful name of Jesus Christ we ask and pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Let's close in worship with the hymn, Help Us Accept Each Other. And if that doesn't sound too familiar, we're going to sing it to the tune of Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. So that's Help Us Accept Each Other. Let's sing together. Help us.
us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and So, Lord, your lessons as in our daily life we struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people, for all, not just for some, to love them as. Today's encounters with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for righteousness and bread. We need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Renew it with your spirit, Lord. Friends, we thank you for joining us today online. I'm very thankful for our musicians, our tech team, our, our band today. Thank you all for, for leading us here that we can do this thing today. I um, want to give you a, kind of a different benediction. It's actually one of the quotes from John Wesley from a little earlier today. Uh, let this be a word of encouragement as we go from this place today. Friends, do all the good you can. By all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as ever long as you can. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask and pray, and all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.